other areas. So the principles and scope of a building product registration scheme. Okay, like Gary, I'd like to acknowledge um, traditional owners and pay respects to elders uh, past, present and emerging. As I'm in Adelaide, it's the Kana people of the Adelaide Plains. Okay, so this presentation, in this presentation, I'll briefly outline our role, um, how we got here, give an overview of the proposed scheme and what views we're seeking. Okay, so some housekeeping, just as Gary said, um, can you please submit questions through the Q&A feature at the top of the screen? And we'll answer questions at the end and we'll aim to address common themes in questions together. Okay, the Australian Building Codes Board is a standard setting body. Um, it's responsible for the National Construction Code, the Watermark and the Codemark Certification Schemes. It's a joint initiative of all levels of government in Australia, together with the construction industry and the Australian Building Code Board's mission is to oversee really issues relating to the health, safety, amenity, accessibility and sustainability in building. Okay, how did we get here? So there have been a number of building product failures in Australia and overseas. A highly influential report concerning the building products in Australia was the February 2018 Building Confidence Report by Professor Peter Shergold and Bromwell Weir. The report recommendations included agreeing a position on the establishment of a compulsory product certification scheme for high risk building products. A later framework report was commissioned, included cost benefit analysis by the Centre for International Economics. This report and the analysis is on the Australian Building Codes Board's website. In April 2024, that's this year, the framework report and the costing information was provided as input to building ministers. Okay, so in June this year, building ministers asked for a proposal. The scheme in the discussion paper is the proposal, but it's really important to note that no decision has yet been made. We've provided a reasonably detailed proposal, so comments and alternate proposals can be shaped. In all cost of cases, the benefits significantly outweigh the costs. Okay. So what makes this different? The proposed scheme is different from others that have been proposed and there have been many proposed over the year, years because it's national in coverage, it's linked to national construction code approvals and it's underpinned by national construction code reforms. It's designed to promote consumer and industry conformance and the building product register would recognise appropriate schemes. For instance, it may be the product assessed by another scheme such as Watermark as appropriate and that register entry would just point to the appropriate entry on the watermark register. Importantly, building ministers have requested the proposal for further consideration later this year. Okay, what are the aims of the scheme? Well, firstly, it's to establish a risk-based product conformance scheme for all building products. This approach to regulation is like that used in a health sphere, so artificial hearts and new pharmaceuticals have rigorous assessment requirements. Well, vitamin C and fish oil can be listed, that is registered using self-assessment on the basis of evidence. Health claims are restricted to the evidence base in both cases. This scheme is to require public standardised product information and traceability. QR codes, one of the traceability technologies we're looking at, can let you know what the product features are and their assessment status. This scheme is also to establish a national register for, book for designated products. The scheme will be fully cost recovered without unnecessary duplication of existing schemes. So key focus and limitations. The proposed new scheme focuses on the performance of building products with, a rig with rigorous evidence requirements for new, a new risk-based NCC category. 
designated products. I'll talk more about this in a later slide. Non-designated building products can be voluntarily registered and self-assessed. We would see more information made available about building products, their intended uses and common compliance issues. These would be identified by manufacturers. For instance, manufacturers could have to supply a small number, such as three to five examples of common compliance issues, like specifying that plain steel roofing should not be um, installed within 50 metres of salt water. Look, amendments might be required to other schemes to bring them into line with the new proposal. That's likely to be faster, more efficient than trying to duplicate or replace those schemes. Okay, so <clears throat> this is exactly the same that, um, as a diagram in the discussion paper, so I won't try and go through it all here uh, because the discussion paper is probably a bit more, a bit easier to discern. Um, just on the left hand side, there are a whole heap of entities, and the right hand side are enablers of the scheme. It's important to note that chain of responsibility. Um, issues, states are already looking at these. The other enablers are specified minimum information in the same format, designated products, mandatory register inclusion for them, other building products, voluntary self-assessment if on the register, evidence of suitability under the National Construction Code, auditing and a realistic chance of enforcement. The existing schemes, it's really important um, that interact with them, product identifies an international traceability and national coverage and NCC uh, and public accessibility, education. It's very important that people know how the building regulations um, fits together. Okay, so now the structure of the scheme. So the discussion paper basically um, separates the scheme into five parts so that um, it can be looked at. So the first is the intent. The second is, better, is providing better building information, product information. The third is risk, a risk-based approach to demonstrating National Construction Code conformance. The fourth is transparent processes. And the fifth is how the scheme will operate on a sustainable basis. Benefits to industry and consumers. The scheme's designed to have faster access to accurate product information for streamlining and faster approvals, better quality housing and greater assurance of conformance, easier product selection of conforming products for professionals, clear installation information, examples of non-compliant unintended uses, and support for faster construction in priority areas, such as I don't know, social housing. Okay, better building product information. So the minimum sta standard information required for transparency and compliance is proposed as in a standardised format with manufacturers responsible for updating this information. It's proposed to be in plain English, include a description, support and product details have a statement of intended purpose, uh, instructions for compliance, um, labeling and global interoperable digital identifier information is also required. This will allow the tracing of products to ensure what's delivered on site is the product specified and that the product substitution can better meet NCC requirements. It's also um, proposed to have warranty details and compliance issues to be included. Okay, a risk-based approach. The assessment of designated products is proposed to be proportionate to risk. That is, assessment should be risk appropriate, independent and verifiable. The designated products category would be to determined by the board in consultation with jurisdictions. This will be through a combined assessment of building products for structural integrity, safety, and risk of defects. Designated products are likely to be fire safety systems such as smoke alarms and fire rated panels, fire collars, and damp dampers. 
structural and waterproofing elements such as structural steel and wood beams and waterproofing products for multi-storey buildings and difficult to assess and verify products. The scheme would leverage existing processes to the extent appropriate to avoid unnecessary duplication. Other products could be assessed or recognised through other programs that are assessed as appropriate. The scheme is not designed to duplicate appropriate industry and other assessment schemes that are working well, although some amendments may be required in some cases for the designated products category. So existing programs we're talking about are things like Codemark, Watermark, Gas, Steel and Electrical Schemes. Okay, Scheme Trust, Education and Promotion. The scheme could be promoted through two marks, one for certified conformity assessed products and one for listed products. <coughs> Sorry. Manufacturers must update the information on the register for any substantive changes. The Australian Building Codes Board would conduct validation and verification to increase trust in the scheme. National construction code changes will require evidence for designated products and supporting information held by manufacturers. Penalties will be in place for unsupported or misleading claims. Okay. So what does this mean for manufacturers? Manufacturers are required to provide minimum, minimum information on all their building products in a standardised format. This will include labelling and digital identifiers for traceability. Register entries are mandatory for designated products and voluntary for others. So you can, you can see what traceability looks like for building products in the retail space already. When you go to Bunnings or other hardware stores, there's a barcode or a QR code on the building product and that allows for that product to be identified and tracked. Okay. Scheme operation, sustainability and oversight. The principle of cost recovery and auditing is to fully recover the cost of the scheme through registrations. This could mean the scheme could be funded through cost recovery with mandatory registration of products in the designated category, as well as voluntary registrations. Fees would be charged depending on the product designation and would need to have cover the costs of promoting and administering the scheme, as well as preparing formal referrals for compliance and enforcement action. A key part of sustainability is keep the registers functioning to what's needed. So we're building a Hyundai here, not a Rolls Royce. Uh, register operation would include responsibility for auditing register entries, while states and territories would remain responsible for auditing construction sites. Auditing, auditing could include checking building products were installed and approved with the frequency of auditing, ensuring a realistic chance of audit and application of penalties. The scheme would also be subject to periodic oversight by building ministers through the building ministers meeting. An annual report on the scheme usage and performance would be provided and the scheme would be periodically reviewed with opportunities for improvements to be presented. Okay. So, a summary of the key changes, there are three key changes. All building products would be required to have minimum information in standardised format, and they'd be traceable through labelling and digital identifiers, and for many through a product register. Two, there'd be a new risk-based category of designated products in the National Construction Code. Um, these would be determined by the board in consultation with the um, jurisdictions. Thirdly, there'd be a national register which would be mandatory for designated products and voluntary for self-assessed registration for other products. There'd be no change to state and territory government's construction approvals and enforcement, and there'd be no major changes for existing schemes to avoid duplication. There might be some changes with designated, um, where a scheme covers designated products just to alter the evidence. So it's in risk appropriate, independent, and verifiable. Okay, so making submission. Okay, this is an over, overview of 
um, how to get more information and give us your feedback on this. Australian Building Codes Board Consultation Hub is at consultation.abcb.gov.au. So we're seeking an overall level of support for the scheme and information on the five key areas. We're also seeking information on access to test data and designation of complex modular products. We're particularly interested in parts of the proposed scheme that you support or don't support and reasons for this and suggestions for improvements. Okay, so um, if we've missed something or if you wanna raise something else, the last question is any other issues. All right, so thank you for your time and I think we'll go to questions now. Terrific. Thank